Hey, we back. I'm here on Desmos, and today we're doing something really dumb, which of course has never happened before. Um, I was having a conversation on my Discord, link in description, uh, the other day about calculus, and um, I mentioned in said uh, discussion that I had taught my sister, who at the time was 12, a little bit of calculus because she was curious and she had asked me um and this was a surprising fact to the other members of the discussion because to be fair you would not expect a 12 year old to be doing calculus and that's that's fair that's fair um and i jokingly said at the time oh well i'll have to make a video um explaining some calculus then won't i and it was a joke but i figured you know what why the fuck not so here we are we're doing some calculus. Uh, now, disclaimer, this is not meant to teach you how calculus works, not some like proper introductory session. What I'm doing today is I'm going to explain what I told my sister at the time um, so that you can understand that actually a 12 year old doing a bit of calculus is really not that hard. Uh, because it's not calculus and its base level is actually much easier than people think it is. And that's not just me trying to be big brained. Like if you actually take the most simplest form of calculus, like the most simple thing that you can do using calculus that is helpful. It's really simple. Uh, so that's that's what I'm going to be explaining today. So let's start by taking a look at this straight line that I've drawn on Desmos. Uh, this is y equals 4x minus 4. What does this mean? Uh, well, what this means is that whenever the x value is something, in order to get the y value, you multiply by 4, and then you take away 4. So, example, when the x value is 2, you multiply by 4, which gets you 8, and then take away 4, which gets you 4. And that's the y value. And as you can see, that point is very much on the line here that's been drawn. And you can do that for all the points, right? Now, this is just, that's graphs. That's how graphs work, right? Um, the individual bits of this equation are interesting. Uh, the 4 that is next to the x means that every time we go along 1 on the x-axis, we go up 4 on the y-axis, which is true. You see here, we've gone from 1 up to 2, and we've gone from 0 up to 4, and we, and we arrive here, right? Then the minus 4, this is also an interesting number because this means where it intersects the y-axis down here. When x is 0, then y is minus 4. There's our two interesting numbers, right? Uh, what we call those is the y-intersect, which makes a lot of sense, and the gradient. This is the gradient, right? Um, now, this works fine for these types of lines. However, lines do not always look like this, because lines in maths are not straight. Uh, so if we get rid of this straight line and we put a different line on here, we have y equals x squared going to assume people know what squared means. If you're a 12 year old, you probably know what squared means. Um, this is not a straight line. And we do not have such fancy numbers to figure out where stuff goes on this line. We do have the y-intercept. The y-intercept in this case is uh, zero, but we could, we could have a y-intercept, there we go, of plus one. We could set it to a minus four, same as the other one. And you can see the place where it intersects the y-axis is, is changing equally the same. But there is no gradient. What's the gradient? Is the gradient 1 because there's no number next to the x? Well, obviously not, because the, the gradient of 1 would not work like this. This is a curved line. What we have is a gradient that changes, right? The, the gradient down here, you can probably tell, is 0 because it's flat, right? You have a flat line at the bottom. And then as it goes off into infinity, we're going to have a vertical line. That might be a little more difficult to understand, but yeah. Along the line, it, the gradient goes up, right? And so what we can do, we can use calculus to figure out what the gradient is of this line. Now, spoiler, the gradient at x equals 2 is 4. If we line these two lines up against each other, you can very easily see that. We can zoom in as far as we like to go, and these lines are, uh, are indistinguishable from each other, right? It's like flat Earth, you know? Earth looks flat from where we are, because we're really small. But actually, 
Earth is not flat, Earth is a sphere. It's the same as how the x square is not a straight line. You can't really tell when you're looking at it so close. It looks like a straight line from here, right? And that means that at this point, the gradient is 4, right? If you went really small, the gradient would be 4. But how can we work that out from any point in the line? Well, that's where calculus comes in. The formula for doing calculus uh, on polynomials specifically, which is these types of numbers with squares and cubes, powers, right, indices. The formula for doing that is you differentiate it. And to do that, you take the number here, which is 2, you multiply it by that, and you minus 1 to that number. So to demonstrate, if you took this whole thing here and you multiplied it by 2, that would be 2. And then you could take this number and minus 1, that would be 1. Right? And this is the differentiated form of y equals 2x. Now, you can see this has drawn another line on the graph here. This means the gradient of the first line. So if we plug the x equals 2 in here, we can see that our value is 4, right? Uh, can I line it up? There you go. At x equals 2, y equals 4. And y in this case is not y anymore. y is the gradient of the other line. You can plug whatever number you like into here, and you will find the gradient. 2 times x, and then power of 1 obviously does nothing, so it's just 2x. Right, let's put our first line back, shall we? Got y squared. So let's take some examples. When we have x equals 1, that's just 1 times 2. So the gradient here is 2. The gradient here is 4. The gradient uh, up here at x equals 3, the gradient is 6. Now the y value is 9, because 3 squared is 9. But the gradient is 6. So if we wanted to draw another line here, what we could do, we could do y equals 6x, we'd have to take away 6, not 6, 9, sorry. And you can see that at this point here, 3 and 9, it is clearly the same gradient as the other line, right? And that's calculus. There you go. Now, we can do a slightly more complicated example just to demonstrate the formula, because the formula is the thing that's the calculus. That's what we need to remember, right? So let's suppose we have y equals 2x cubed, and then we could have plus, uh, let's do minus actually, minus x squared. And then we could have, say, uh, plus x minus 4, right? Now this is a much more complicated looking graph. It's a bit wiggly, right? It's a bit wiggly. Right. How are we going to differentiate this? Well, you, we use the formula again, right? So on this first one, we do 2 times 3, which is 6, and we take away 1. There we go. On the next one, this is a minus 1. It may just look like a minus, but of course, we could multiply this by 1. It would be the exact same thing, right? So this is minus 1 right here, and we're going to multiply it by 2. So what we get is minus 2, and then we take away 1. Here, again, we could multiply this by 1, so this is plus 1. But what's up here? We don't have an indice up here. What is up here? Well, again, what's up here actually is 1, the power of 1. And what's 1 times 1? Well, it's 1, right? And then we take away 1 from here. Now, fun fact, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So x to the power of 0 is 1. So it's just plus 1. All of that. And it just becomes plus 1. We remove the x entirely. Now, what about this last one? We've got minus 4. But what about the x? There is no x. Ah, that means we've got x to the power of 0. We could write that, and it would be the exact same thing. Do you see how the graph was the exact same thing? So we're going to do the exact same thing. We do minus 4 times 0. Well, well that's just 0, isn't it? 0. And then we take away 1. We've now got minus 1. Now you might think, but wait, minus 1? How does that work? We don't, need to, we don't need to worry about it. Because however this works, it's being multiplied by 0. We just get rid of it. Poof. And you see how that didn't change the graph at all? We can put that back, and it looks like this. And we can get rid of it. 
and it looks like this. All of that big mess with the x to the minus 1, it's gone. Because it's multiplied by 0, so we don't care. Right, and there you go. Differentiated. Now, we've got to the tricky bit. This is also a curve. So, how do you tell the gradient of the first one if the second one is also a curve? Well, firstly, we're not looking for the gradient on the second one, we're looking for the point. So the gradient on the first one would be, for example, here, where we have 1 and 5. That means when the value of x is 1, the gradient of that first graph is 5. We don't need to care about the gradient of this one. But if we wanted, we could differentiate it again. And we could keep on going. You can differentiate it as many times as you like. Eventually, there's not going to be anything left to differentiate. So if we take something like this and differentiate it, we'll do it quickly this time. We know that this is going to be multiplied by 0 because we have x to the 0. So we just get rid of that. Um, and I didn't mean to press the backspace an extra time there. But yeah, there you go. We multiply that by 1, which is still 6. And then we remove the x, right? So that differentiated is just this. If we show this one, this is a straight line, right? What's the gradient of this? You, you can tell what the gradient of this is. The gradient of this is zero. What happens if we differentiate it? Well, we have six times x to the zero. Or we're multiplying it by zero. Differentiate it, we get zero. You see how this works out quite nicely, because the gradient of this is zero. And then when we differentiate it, it tells us it's zero all the time, all the way along the line. It's always zero. So there you go. You can differentiate it as many times as you like. And that is calculus. And that's all you need to know. It's not. There's a lot more, than, a lot more to calculus than that. That's, that's definitely your base level. And if you really want to understand it, you're probably going to need to start by doing it from first principles, which is a lot more complicated. And that's why I don't explain that. Or I'm not planning to. Not in this video, anyway. Like I said, what I was planning on doing here is just explaining what I explained to my sister when she was 12. And um, I think that should be reasonably comprehensive. Because what you're doing at the end of the day is just applying that formula to whatever you feel like applying the formula to. You multiply by this, and then you take one off this. Simple. For every single bit of the, 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 the equation, and then you find the gradient of the line. And that's it. Now you may say, but finding the gradient of the line, that's not very helpful. And you know what? When you're 12, yeah, it's not very helpful. You know what? That's why they don't teach you calculus when you're 12. Because it's not very helpful. It's not very helpful at all. But now you know. And you can say, look, I can do calculus. Because you can do that particular bit that isn't very helpful. And it's actually quite easy, right? Because all you're doing is multiplying two numbers by, uh, together. And uh, I, I think it's safe to say that 12-year-olds can multiply two numbers together, right? I think, I think we're all good on that one. Anyway, I think that's pretty much everything. Pretty much everything that I was going to say. Hopefully that made sense. Um, I'm sure I will get someone saying it doesn't make sense. Uh, because everyone seems to struggle with calculus. And um, I, 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 can, I can never understand it. <laughs> never understand why it's so difficult, to be honest. Um, especially when you're talking about something like this. Um, but yeah, hopefully that made sense. And uh, to those of you that are old enough to actually do calculus properly, you probably went, yeah, that made sense. That's how it works. Um, and you will probably immediately see why it's actually way more complicated than that. Because of course it is. Not all graphs look like this. You can't do that with all graphs. <laughs> it's, it's not so simple. But if your graphs do look like this, now you know how to do calculus and you're set. Anyway, I'm going to leave this video here. Bye!